Good morning. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Monsignor Jerry Ritchie. Uh, Father Ritchie was the priest in, at Our Lady of Mercy in Harbor Creek, which is in our diocese up near Erie. Well, I was the pastor there for many, many years. He's a very nice, nice old man, and uh, his funeral was Monday. So keep him in your prayers. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed, Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for, 
and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what they had promised, what they what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day the Son of Man will come. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open it immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? 
And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master has delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants, to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour, and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant, who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. But the servant, who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel ends in a fairly scary fashion with all this talk of beatings for unfaithful servants who knew their master's will and all that. And like last week, we're supposed to remind ourselves that Jesus isn't, doesn't want us to be scared. He wants us to be ready so that there's nothing to fear. Now, if you think about the way the readings unfold, it all makes sense. Um, what we hear in our first two readings are stories of faith. The Israelites believed, or in the letter to the Hebrews, talked about the faith of Abraham. You know, God said to Abraham, I'll give you this promised land. And Abraham didn't know how that was going to happen, but he had faith. He had faith in the person who was making the promise. God said to Abraham, you know, uh, you're going to have descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky or the sands of the seashore. And Abraham didn't understand how that was going to work. He was in his 90s, and Sarah, his wife, was 85 or 90 years old. So anyway, the time for children had long since passed, and there weren't any. So, but so he didn't know how it would happen, but he trusted the person who made the promise. And great things happened. And so Jesus has two messages in today's gospel. First, trust in those promises. Trust that the day is going to come. Trust that God is going to be there. Trust that there's going to be everlasting life. But at the same time, make sure that you're the good and faithful servant. Make sure that you're prepared. And that is never a bad message. You know, before Mass this morning, I was outside talking to the guy who's in charge of all the pavers and he asked so is anything going on at the church this weekend and i said well church and he said oh really we're ripping everything up and i said really and he said yeah i thought you'd be maybe moving all the masses over to saint bartholomew's and i said well i didn't know that everything was happening today so it's one of those days where i'm sitting here worried but we've been thinking about this sort of thing for a couple months and trying to figure out what to do if the unthinkable should happen. How are we going to get people into and out of the church and all that? You know, be faithful. Things will work out, but also be prepared. And that's what Jesus is trying to say to us about God's heavenly kingdom and about the nature of life itself. Understand that God is going to take care of you, but make sure you use good sense. Um, make sure that even while you understand that Jesus died on the cross for you and your sins have been paid for, it's still not a bad idea to try to avoid sin and lead a good and holy life. Now, I said that in an understated fashion, but what we really need to do is do our best to lead lives that are exemplary. Do our best to lead lives in which God is looking at us and saying, boy, is that wonderful. There's my good and faithful servant. That's what Jesus is trying to encourage us to do today, to understand that we've been given this time on earth, whether it's 50, 60, 70, 80, or 90 years, and we've been given all these gifts, all these talents, all these resources, all these opportunities, and what he's saying to us is, 
Understand that God gave you all that in part so you could lead a good, happy life, but he wants you to lead a holy life as well, a life that is of service to him, a life is, that is of service to your brothers and sisters. And if we strive to do that, if we strive for generosity, if we strive for compassion, if we strive to make every day count, well then when the last day comes, we don't have to worry like those unfaithful servants in Jesus' parable, but instead we can look forward to the coming of the Master with great joy and great anticipation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For the church, may God help us to grow in holiness and be a light that leads many souls to salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them to wise decision-making as they strive to bring peace to our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and immigrants fleeing violence or poverty, May the Lord look graciously upon them and provide them places of welcome and respite. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who minister to the sick in this community of faith, may God's grace strengthen them in their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Monsignor Jerry Ritchie, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, may they come to share in the fullness of the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you show us the path to endless joy. Hear our prayers and pour out your grace upon us. We ask these in all things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Monsignor Jerry Ritchie, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And now, since we cannot have communion together, please recite with me this prayer so we may have spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Be pleased, O oh, oops, may the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O oh Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. As always, I'd like to thank you for being here with us, and I hope you have a good day and a good week. God bless you. Hosanna.